12 tool to model almost everything in a blender. Hello guys and this video is going to be really special for beginners because today I cover up 12 modeling tools that are really important and if you are a beginner and you just learned these tools I am sure that you can model almost anything that you want in blender. So each of these tools are designed for their specific task and it can be really useful in different situations and there are a lot of models that can be only done by just learning one tool too so these are really important and now let's get started okay so let's start the list uh, on the first we have an x2 tool so it's a really common tool even if you start blender i think the first tool that ever people teach is the x2 tool so if you even don't know let me show you what it is and how useful it can be so go to the face selection and select your face, any face that you want to extrude and then press E and you would get an extension like this and then you can scale and do whatever you want. So it's really useful and yep, this is the main basic tool that allow us to create um, anything that we want. So let me show you a few examples that how it can be useful. For example, I have this simple model that I want to create. So I would simply add a circle and I would scale it down go to the edit mode and extrude it up let's just scale this one a bit and what now i have to do is to extrude then scale move it up and then extrude scale and i can just try to match it like this scale extrude scale extrude as you can see it takes a bit more time to match it but the way is really simple that we just need to extrude and then scale according to our model and this will allow us to model this kind of models exactly with one this one tool so it's so powerful that we don't even need any other tool to just create this thing so i'm just extruding this one and this is how i'm creating the whole model with it so as you can see guys i can actually draw this kind of models with this one tool I can also practice uh, like the alphabets with this one for example I want to create an edge so what I would do is that I would move this one up up to here and then one more extrude and then one more extrude up to here then here here and this kind of stuff so it's not the accurate way to do a lot of things but you can try that how this power, this tool is powerful that it allows you to even model almost everything so yeah you can practice with this one tool and you can create a lot so going to the second tool and that is the bevel tool so normally we have a model and that have this kind of sharp edges so to smooth these edges what we have to do is to go to the edit mode pick up here the edge select and select any edge that you want to make it smooth and then control b to just allow the bevel tool and this will actually split this into two and if you want you can just scroll to increase the segments and this will allow you to actually smooth the edge like this so as you can see this edge is sharp but this edge is now pretty round so this tool actually allow us to bevel the things like this so i can increase the segments that i want and i can make it like this okay so the third tool that i'm going to show you is the knife tool so it's one of my favorite tool i would go to the edit mode and pick up a vertex and now i will press k to pick up the knife tool so let me show you what it can do it's actually work like a knife so i can just try to cut any kind of shape that i like as you can see i try to just model the simple shape and now i can do whatever i want like i can exclude this one and this will now look like a heart here. So the knife tool is really powerful. It has some more functions also, but I, we won't go to the details. Okay, so on number five, we have the edge slide tool. So, okay, so for example, I have this model and I want to this edge to slide exactly in this direction. So the one way is that I do it manually, but it's not really possible because uh, it will move the direction that I want. So the correct way is to actually slide this edge. For that, what I have to do, there is a short key for it. So I will press double G and this will allow me to actually slide in that direction that it is. 
so it's really useful and it can save a lot of time that we need it. So on number six we have the bridge tool. So if we have this kind of shape and we want to connect this face with this one in a cute circle like this, so we need the bridge tool for it. So let me show you how that works. So we would go to the edit mode and then alt and shift and left click to actually select the whole loop. And now I would press F3 to pick up the search one. And as you can see, this is on the top, but I can, if it's not showing, you can just search for bridge and this will come, come on top. So you can just click on this one. But before that, you also need the opposite side to be selected. So uh, Alt Shift and left, left click this one and Alt Shift and left click this one. And now press the space again, the F3 again and pick up the bridge edge loop. And as you can see, it connected, but uh, it's we need some setting here. So we would come up here to this menu and we need the number of cuts to be like this seven. And we need this one to be blend, blend it like this. And then we can actually control this one, the smoothness with uh, the smoothness that we have here. So you can actually uh, control that it's to the upside or it's to the downside. So this is also really useful and it can help to model a lot of stuffs like this. Okay, next we have a tool called Inset Faces. So believe me, it's really similar to the Extrude tool, but people still use it. But let me show you how that works. So let me show you if I pick up the face selection and I pick up this face with I, I can insert these faces and it will actually a kind of like extrude at the same place and then I can extrude it again. So this is really similar to the extrude one, but it's a bit more shortcut because if I just simply extrude, I first have to right click and then have to scale this one. But the inset is exactly the same one, but it actually allows you to uh, scale it directly inside that. So the only uh, difference between inset and this one is that extrude give you uh, to that direction directly and it grows like this. But where inset is a kind of like doing it an extrusion inside the this, these faces. So yeah, that is a little bit that difference. But other than that, yeah, this is really clear and this is really similar. Okay, so next we have the fill tool. So it's really common. And again, what we have to do is to select the whole loop and just we have to press the F to fill this one. So it's really simple. Um, we can fill it like this one, but there is also another fill that is great fill because now if we apply any of the modifier like subdivision, as you can see, it will work like this because we don't have supported geometry here. So there is another way to fill this one and that is to select the whole thing and then press Control F and then come up here to the grid fill and this will now allow you to actually um, fill it but but with some geometry so it actually gives some support to it also you can just uh, change the upset and as you can see i make this one straight a bit and you can just give this one if you like this will allow you to like make it more straight i really like this one so yeah that's it and this is how we can fill our faces Okay, another tool that is a bit uncommon, but I think that's pretty useful and that that is the split tool. So for example, I have this edge and I want to split it. So what I have to do is to simply press the V key and this will allow you to actually split the whole thing. And now I can just open up the box exactly like this. And I think this is pretty satisfying. And it can be really helpful to create a lot of stuff. Okay, so on the number 10, we have the proportional editing tool. So it's a tool that allows you to work uh, in most of the organic stuff. So for example, I want to move these edges, but in a smoother way. So actually, when I move the things, that only moves the selected things. But what I want here is that it also uh, select the connected one also a little bit. So it gives the effect. So there we come, the proportional editing tool comes. So we can enable, enable it by pressing O or we can come up here and click on this one. So now if we just do that, it will give this circle and this is a radius of the strings of the proportional editing. So if I just now move that, as you can see, it's moving exactly smoothly and the connected vertex also moves. So that's, I think, pretty important. And these things allow you to actually do this kind of stuff like i want to scale the ears so i would just do this 
I want to make this one big and yeah so without proportional editing it's really hard and even impossible to do this thing so this is why it's really important and this is one of my favorite tool in Blender okay so on the 11th we have the spin tool and this is now really interesting so normally what we have to do is that if we want to create a 90 degree uh, rotation like this and we want to create for example a pipe here so normally what we have to do is to extrude and then rotate and then extrude then rotate and yeah we can just try something like this but it's actually really hard to do it in a smoother way so what we have to do is that here the spin tools come so we have to just select our loop and then come up here and here we can find the spin tool so if i just press the left click i as you can see it gives two options i will talk on the both options but let's first talk about simple the spin one and as you can see it gives this cursor and this thing so what we have to do is to put it here so i will press shift and right click to move it here and then i can change the directions cause it's the y direction here and now i can just left click and with control i can just map it like this and as you can see how smoothly it create my 90 degree angle like this so it's really useful and you can actually create a lot of interesting stuff with this one okay so the another tool of uh, the another okay so another function of the spin tool is the spin duplicate so let me show you how that works so for example we have a spare like this and in edit mode we keep it here so the thing is that spin duplicate allow you to spin the object with duplicating it so if i just now select this one it gave this and if i just drag as you can see it actually allowed me to spin and duplicate so i can change the number of the steps that i like according to the shape that i want and yeah there we have okay so the last tool that we are going to learn is the shrink and grow tool so for example we have this pipe and we want to decrease the thickness so what we have to do is that select all and then press alt s and this will allow you to scale our object along these normal or simply what we can do that it actually scale it outside and inside so this is a really useful tool and as you can see the result that how quickly it's allowing us to actually upscale and downscale our model like this so yeah so hope this video was useful to you if you are a beginner i believe that these 12 tools can really change your life as a 3d artist so you just need to learn these all tools and then apply it in your project that you want so just learn these tools and try to practice with each tool as i did some of them with the extrude tool that i start modeling these simple things so you can do the same exercise with every tool that you learn so you can create some something really interesting with the knife tool you can do something really interesting with the spin tool and you can do it with each tool that i show so hope you learned a lot from this video and thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video for now bye